everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. This week we've got a really cool topic lined up for you. We're going to be looking at the difference between an, a, a clay render, an ambient occlusion render, and an ambient occlusion pass. Now to the naked eye, they might seem like they're the same thing, and in some sense they are. But the differences between them is what helps you to distinguish in what scenario you'll use each one. So a clay render is fast and easy to set up, but ultimately it doesn't provide you a whole lot of control. An ambient occlusion render, on the other hand, gives you a lot of control, but it's not useful for certain situations. And that's when you'd use an ambient occlusion pass, which gives you the ultimate level of control and is useful in post-production. So let's have a look. This scene, you might recognize it from the Sun and Sky uh, Monday movie. I've just gone ahead and repurposed it by deleting all the lights. Let's take a render and see what it looks like. Okay, pretty basic scene. I'm going to close this window. So let's take a clay render. From my Create tab, under my Lights group, under the standard Lights pull down, I'm going to select a skylight and I'm going to create it in my scene. In order to take a clay render, all I have to do is have applied that gray material that you saw to all of my objects and created a skylight that casts shadows. Now for the sake of speed I'm going to go ahead and turn down these samples just so that you can see what this looks like. And I'm going to take a, take a render here. Now you'll have to excuse the graininess of the render but you get the idea, right? What the skylight does is it's creating uh, light casting from the background into our scene and that's a nice quick but dirty way of getting the basic idea of the shapes of the scene and creating some default lighting but ultimately it doesn't provide us a whole lot of control what if I want to see underneath this bridge it's too dark I could turn up the multiplier from 1.5 to maybe 2.5 but then the rest of my scene will be blasted out we can't do that so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this light so we're back to our original scene. And now I want to show you what an ambient occlusion render looks like. Now that's different because we need to use the mental ray renderer. And it's a little bit more complicated. Taking a clay render is so easy, I actually have a tutorial on my blog that talks about how you can take a clay render using just a button. It's very simple, and it doesn't mess up your uh, render settings that you've already created. It's really useful for modeling. But to take an ambient occlusion render, under the Processing tab, we're able to enable Material Override, which says that no matter what the materials are in my scene, I want this material to be applied to everything. And then what do we do? Yeah, that's right. We create a material that has ambient occlusion as the diffuse map. I've already gone ahead and created one here, but I'll show you how I did it. I created a ray trace material, and under the diffuse map, next to the swatch, I clicked right here and chose Ambient Reflective Occlusion, just like that, and I click OK. Now with just the default settings, I'm actually going to turn this down so it's faster, let's take a look at this and compare it to what we thought of the skylight method, taking a clay render. Copy that over. Now for starters, this was a little bit faster, but the fact is that they look much the same. It's too dark under the bridge, it's light out here, and we can see what we're doing. But we have the extra degree of control where we can manipulate this ambient occlusion map. By default, the maximum distance is set to zero, which means that all objects are considered in this material. I know it seems kind of silly, but that's the way it works. If we set this to a more reasonable value, like 150 feet, and then re-render, we'll actually see the final image looking different from the original clay render that we took before. It's much lighter now, and in fact it even went faster. 
That's because not all objects are being considered when darkening a particular object or a particular area. So the darkening effect is now isolated in parts of the image, and the default lighting takes over for areas that are not super dark. It's a good effect, but ultimately, what if we don't want that lighting, the default lighting or anything else? What if we only want the ambient occlusion effect so that we can use it in post-production, like in a Photoshop overlay? Well, that's when we want the ambient occlusion pass. So keep this part in mind here where we were able to manipulate the map because that's going to be important for the ambient occlusion pass. Also, the same idea applies. So we're working with this material override. I've gone ahead and already created an ambient occlusion pass material here. I'm going to go ahead and make it again just to show you. This is originally a mental ray material. I don't quite like to use this because it's like recreating the wheel every time. But it's good for this particular technique. Under the surface shader, we want to use that same ambient reflective occlusion. What's important to note about this particular usage of it is that it's not going to be affected by the lighting of the scene in the same way that the ray trace material was. It's unaffected by lighting. It's only a diffuse shader. So I'm going to take this new material we created and I'm going to copy it over just like I did before as an instance. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the samples again. And rather than leave it at the default of zero, which you already saw how it reacts using the ray trace material, I'm going to go ahead and change this to 250. And now I'm going to take a render, an ambient occlusion pass. Notice the difference? This render is white with black. That's it. There's no shading and there's no lighting. So you could take this image and overlay it with the actual final render that has materials and darken up those edges and dirty up some of these occluded areas. This is probably, mm, I don't know if I'd say it's the most powerful technique, but it's definitely up there. One of the most powerful techniques you can have in architectural rendering is this ambient occlusion pass. It can really bring out the richness of your image in, in tandem with a depth map, but we'll go over that in another Monday movie. So until next week, stick around. I'll probably have another uh, tutorial up for you. And of course, next Monday I'll have another Monday movie. Until then, happy rendering.